Unicorn Circuit. Welcome to another episode of the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of car news and amazing entertainment from all over the world. Before we go any further, are you starting to get a cold head? Yep. Cold ball sack? Nope. Cold feet? Yep. Cold butthole? Nope. Then it's time to wrap your head and sack in the uh, Mighty Come On Chopped Beanie. We got a discount on these. Just put them on the thing and then enter the code head unit. And you can wear and it. You can wear one. Like that. Yep. Or it's convertible so you can flip it and it still has the right thing on it so you can wear one like that. So check it out. We've got the biggest show we've ever done. Massive. Uh, it's going to be Probably absolutely not huge. huge. But massive. Um, most likely the same as everything else we've done. Some people get on here, onto the intervals. This, uh, and this is what they, I'm not even going to do an accent because I suck at accent. They go, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I haven't uploaded for two days. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm not sorry when I don't upload. I'm not, because do you know what? It just means I've been busy doing something else. Yeah. And it's also like when the government says, we sincerely apologise to the people. No, who? If you are no a one sponge, said sorry to me. If you're a sponge and you want to get squeezed out for all that juicy content, <laughs> like you can't squeeze out a sponge that hasn't absorbed some water, can you? It's got to absorb some water. This and we have true. some watery absorption to share with you today. We're going to spray it everywhere. I'm starting to sound like him. No, We're going to spray what? it everywhere if all over you. If you're going to apologise to someone, you look him in the eye and you go, Hey, John, sorry, I'm sorry that I stole your car. Do you know what I mean? Like, But you don't just go on the news and go, I send my sorries to everyone just in case someone's offended. You don't do that. No. You don't need but to. But there's something we want to just dive into, even pre-news. Uh, is it? Yeah, I think this is pre-news. Are we we're doing Audi RS3? No, that's in the news. Oh, what's pre-news? We're talking is about... Is that the stuff that comes out before the news? It's the, pre <laughs> it's the pre-news. Yes. Makes everything better. Um, <laughs> you alright? Yeah. Do you want to do what's this the... again? No, what's the pre-news? <laughs> we're talking about, on that other show called Mighty Car Mods, the GT... someone tried to flog the GTI. If you haven't seen it, click the thing. Wait a minute, um, this is not that section. No, we're talking about that later, but, I, but we'd, it, I'm just telling you, if you haven't seen that, go and see it, because later in the show... <laughs> I don't know. Later really in the show, good. we're going to cover something in Conspiracy Hat Cat. We're, we're just covering some pretty hectic stuff on that. That's all I'm um, going to say. So you can start news if you want, but someone, I just need to establish that's happening. Someone tried to flog the car. It wasn't us, which is why when the police came, they didn't find our fingerprints on it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, stick around for that. That's coming later in Conspiracy Hat Cat, which is just Make an amazing Make sure you watch to the show. end. Oh, yeah, that. You don't have to, people. So you that, watch and as much as you want to. So that can be an ad to for an iPhone game or something. No, not going to happen around here. People, anyway, should we jump into the news? Mun, in the news today, we're talking beat-ups. We're talking Nissans. We're talking Toyota. Uh, they call them a Prius, are I think, talk, overseas. Are we talking we're about talking Mercedes? I think we are, too. Um, there's all sorts of news. You have landed in the right spot. Thank you for joining us. Thank you each individually. This is Every going to be single the, one of you. Thank the you. The craziest 38 and a half minutes of your entire Dude, hour. We're, we're here for longer than that. We're keeping you entertained all night. All right, let's dive into the news. Mercedes Every week on the news. We tell you the news. This is your trusted source for automotive education. Let's go, Martin. Sure. Mercedes-Benz have um, said that they're doing Level 3 autonomous driving, and they've registered it. It's the first... Le wait on, isn't Level in... 3 the fancy one? No, Level 5 is like... Apparently it goes 1 to 5. Who knows? No, they, but they no one's doing system. that in Australia. Well, no one's doing it. No one can do proper Level 5 where it's like legit no steering wheel. But what level fine. are they doing in Australia? It's arguable that Tesla's autopilot is in the middle somewhere because it can drive, it can be fully self-driving, but you still got to monitor it. It's still occasionally going to make you turn the wheel. What's interesting about this is that Mercedes has said, we have the first like level three proper autonomous, recognized, internationally certified, blah, 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 of self-driving. The interesting thing there is it's the language that they're using. Who certifies it? Who certifies it, but also it's a European company. Europe is all about their certifications. Just look into some of the Google YouTube stuff Tov. to do with EU, to Tov. do with TUV. To do it like they're sort of, and they're very hard on those rules, and it works for them sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. But I just think it's interesting if you want to have a bit of a dive into that. That Mercedes have come out and said we're doing self-driving, and Tesla's like, wait, we've been we've been doing that for like ten years. 
mm. or whatever it is, five years. Um, They're obviously doing it from a safety angle because obviously yes. Mercedes-Benz, I believe they invented or at least popularised seatbelts, mm -hmm. airbags, those kinds of things. Yep. And so I guess, um, look, it's, it's coming. It's coming one way or another. And I do believe, I've said it before, eventually for you to drive your own car, it's going to be like a theme park. Yeah, it kind of flies in the face of the, the, the bro culture you get a bit with um, tech companies who are like, you know, what is it, move fast, break things? Is that, that the theory? Like, don't worry, we'll work it out later. Let's just make the car drive itself. And then obviously you get the news stories about things crashing or not crashing, whatever it is. But Mercedes, I think, have just made that first thing to say, no, this actually works and it's approved by who knows maybe their cousins maybe their best mates or maybe it's like it's full legit um, I'm sure it is being that it's EU and Mercedes but I thought it was interesting have a bit of a dive into that if you want to read Nissan Z car pricing has been revealed um, and it's been revealed with some some surprise it's now shocking. it's a strange price it's shocking uh, in 73,300 and people are saying that's actually pretty good but what's not been included in that is obviously the on road cost that's before on road so you've got to do your dealer delivery and all that kind of stuff oh the old dealer now, delivery uh, don't even start me on that but to give that a little bit of context so recently Mark 8 Golf R came out pricing for that's around $67,000 but if you can actually secure one in Australia, it's going to look like it's going to be about 80000 plus. And golf. I even saw some reports last week that the market Golf R price in the States, 74000 US was advertised. So that's $110,000 or so. If we just look at the very rough maths of it, if a $66,000 Golf R is $80,000, then a $73,000 Nissan Z, by those maths is looking more like it's going to be closer to 90, but it depends how many people um, uh, how many people are trying to go to the dealerships versus how many they have. Around 1,000 Australians actually put some money down. I know a guy who put some money down. He's hoping to get one later. Um, they do have a special one, uh, but the special one's yellow. It's banana. It's full banana. It's, it's full, full banana. banana. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, we have new yellow t-shirts on Mighty Car Mods. We don't. The, the other guys do. If you put the word banana in, you'll get a discount. On, Is it? What do we put it on? On the yellow t-shirts, which we'll link, and also the um, black caps. We've got a stealth edition cap. Anyway, can I, th can I, just, can I jump into that one on this, Z? Because I think this is an interesting thing that's happening to do with the Golf and the Z. What you're also seeing, and I'm saying heaps of on socials, are you seeing car ads where someone's like, this is new, I ordered it, but I don't want it. Or, I saw one recently, I ordered two but I only want one or I'm selling both. Oh, they're trying like, to cash in, are they? Well, and then people pull them up on it because it's obviously just like enthusiast forums and pages and stuff like that and people go, but but why? And, the, and the, the guy's response was kind of fair. It's like, I don't have to tell you why, I'm just selling it. Do you want it or not? It's 10 grand more than retail. Yeah. If you want to pay 10 grand less than retail, wait a year. And if people start to go, oh, but I don't want to wait, and especially in this age of like, I want food, click, bing, bing, it's at your door. Not only at your door, I wait. want someone to actually feed it into my mouth for exactly. me and, and wipe it, my butt the next day. And Australians day. aren't used to it particularly. They're not really used to waiting for this stuff. I mean, the days of dealerships just being packed with, you know, 10 of every car and there's a handful of the performance ones and you can just buy it and drive it away the next day. Dealership's going to go down the bin, man. It's going to go, it's gonna go, like, it's going to go Tesla model eventually. Here's the question, though. Because cars are so homogenised now. Here's the question. Do you think dealers like the fact there's no stock? Because you can look at it one way and go, well, they're not selling anything, it's not making money. But when they are selling the stuff, it's inflated. Well, yeah. I so mean, where is it at? Like, supply, what, is demand, it? Is it, do you make a little bit a lot or do you make a lot a Or do you just have a little bit of that sort of, you know, waiting list so it feels exclusive and then, you know, people can make money? Because the people that are doing this privately, there's dealers doing it too. Saying, well, I've got one, but, you know, it's not you've got to pay it up. And that is, that's, that's happening massively in the States. I know it happens in Australia a little yeah. bit, but in the States, maybe there's a different regulation there. People are just going, look, there's hardly any of these cars. Let's just push the price up. And someone will buy it because if you say to someone who's got some money, do you want to wait 18 months or do you want to come next week? They're just going to go, I'll come next week. All I would say to finish up is it feels to me like if you were Nissan and you said, okay, this is Eddie's 30, 73, call it 75 delivered. And then the dealer, you know, a customer goes, awesome, 75, I've got my finance, I've got whatever i got, I'm going to go and get my dream car. And they walk in the door and go, hey, I'd like to pay 75. It's 95, mate. And you go, but, but Nissan said it's 75. Don't worry about Nissan, it's 95. Doesn't that make Nissan look bad yeah, as a brand? Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I also your average consumer, they don't know that a dealer is not the company. That's right. They're, they're separate entities, it you know. Says it it says Nissan thing. on that, so that's Nissan as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Um, and anyway... I had other news. I'm it's not even going to go there. Um, but what I, I, what, there is one thing that I want to talk about because we are talking about values. Um, mm -hmm. A little while ago, um, I bought an uh, Audi RS3. Um, I, I, I was about to say I really liked it. I didn't. I didn't love it, but it's good a good car. A, a, there was lots. It was a good Fast. car. Um, but Purposeful. not as good as a Volkswagen Up. I'm not even joking. It's not as good. And you can you can you can get any number why. of different rationale of trying out. to compare the two of them. An RS3 is not as good as a Volkswagen well, I just Up. Worked out why. And a Volkswagen Up costs $75,000 less. Because Volkswagen Up chirps second. Yeah. yeah and the RS3 doesn't. Yep, you chirped it in second. Heaps of times. Once. 
Yep. Even before I had. It was rude. Mates don't let mates chirp their cars. It was an accident. It was just so powerful. I just had no idea it would do anyway, that. Anyway, the, the Volkswagen Up's the best car in the world. Not the best by, car in the by, world. By, best, by, better by than an Audi metric. RS3. Yes, I agree. By with that. any metric. Better than an RS4 even. Anyway, so what I wanted to actually share with you, we don't often do this, is I sold um, the Audi RS3 for pretty much the same as what I paid for it. And this is what I purchased with the money. Can you hold that hand there? Yep. That's an Audi RS3. This is what I bought. A WRX, I'll just do, do no, you just be, the, you just, that's just one car. Actually, just do this. No, no, no. Do what? Don't do He's that. Just, that just can't help, your, it's just, just springing Just up. put your thumb there. This okay. is one, yep. one car. Yep. And, and the enjoyment level of, no. <laughs> And, and how much in out of five, with this hand, how much enjoyment level from the RS3 do you think I got? Wait, this is a one? That's one car. How much enjoyment level out of five? Three. Fair. Fair. All right. So hang with me, people. No. Yes. This is what I bought. A WRX STI, the white BRZ, a posty bike, a mountain bike, a PlayStation 5, a TV... <laughs> And a new iPhone. How much combined excitement and entertainment do you think I got out of those things, Martin? Five. Did I do it right? Mountain bikes. Mountain bikes. Yeah. Motorbikes. Yeah. You get a track car, you get a street car. You yeah. The price of cars have gone through the roof. What I'm suggesting you do is if you've got an awesome car, sell it, buy a bunch of other stuff, but sell it to us if it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and then just Public sell it to us cheap. It's but the, the point is one RS three versus yeah, no, it's true. a street car, yep. a track car, a motorbike, a telly, a PlayStation, a yep. mountain bike. It's it's just yeah. It's sometimes you can sell. You might have some fancy BMW. You go. You know what? Do I need a one hundred thousand dollar car? No, I can buy a Volkswagen up if you get seven thousand dollars and use the other ninety to. Invest in something that you believe in. Your education, your future, your kids, your family, a charity, whatever you're thinking. Sell your expensive cars. Sell them to cheap to us. <laughs> if it brings you joy, that's cool. But if you're getting it every day going, oh, do I really need this? Then you can start yeah, questioning that's it. that's how I feel you don't about have the to. Audi It's not an image thing. It doesn't make you, just because you drive an RS3 or an RS4 or whatever, doesn't mean that you're any more better or worse of a person. It's just, it's just a thing that you drive. If it brings you heaps of joy and you love it, you should do it. If you don't buy it, get a mountain bike and a PS5. Exercise and entertainment, right? There it is. I don't have a PS5. Um, what are we what doing next? Oh, you've got Xbox, don't you? No, I've got a PS4. Oh, do you? Yeah. That's old school. I didn't want to do Good the job. whole, speaking of shimmying dealers and people loading prices, I didn't do that. Um, is next, that it even, even legal? legal? My mum gave me a book recently as a gift, and the book is called Cooking with Poo. Uh, no, and it is. What? It's called Cooking with Poo, That's and um, and it's opinion. um, and it's all. It's actually looks like it's quite delicious. Okay, but and it's not even spelt with the H, like the Winnie the Pooh that I'm about to speak about now. Winnie the Pooh is a fictitious bear that has no pants on. Martin, do you like bears with no pants on? Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. Do you do you think that would you like to wear a t-shirt with no pants on? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it night time? It can be any time you like. Yeah, night time. Yeah, well, you know what? What about if that T-shirt... What if that T-shirt had a picture of... What if it was Poo Shirt Inception? It was Winnie the Pooh on a T-shirt with no pants and you were wearing it with no pants. What about if I was in Eastern Europe, though? Exactly. Illegal. Really? Winnie the Pooh, Poland, illegal. Let me read you from the source. I don't know if this is the actual legislation... The cuddly yellow bear stuffed with fluff doesn't wear pants. And because of it, there's a ban on Winnie the Pooh. Okay. To risk because it was a apart. little bit crazy that someone might see a bear that's not a human without wearing pants. What the f*** <laughs> is going on? Seriously. <laughs> what is going on? This is like when we talk about people saying, we spoke about this, there needs to be more diversity with the animals. Oh, yeah, in Bluey. On, in Bluey. Can we just enjoy it for what it is? They're dogs. They can't talk. Let's pretend they can talk. Let's go with it. Come on, people. Come on. Martin, what's next? We're going to have a look at some crap cars. Come with us on my crap vehicle. On 
my crap my car, car, we've got a WB one tonner Ute with a V8 in it. This is Stephen Harley. Ute. He's from Victoria. He's also got a YouTube channel called Vintage Tractors Australia with 367 subscribers. I watched some of the videos on there. He's like chopping wood with old tractors. I just think that's Martin, cool. Martin, I think that's 367 really cool. subscribers. Yep. Is a good um, 45 or 50 more than Mighty Cumberlands used to have. We That's had 312 true. back in the day, so yep. he's doing well. Keep at yep. it. Like a Ferguson TA20 carb clean and saw bench. Anyway, check out his vehicle and then go check out some tractors too. Here it goes. G'day, Unicorn Circuit. Uh, here's my crap car. So here it is, my crap car. It's a 1981 WB1 tonner. Um, it is currently... Out of action, it did a brake booster, so I got the master slam stuff off, rebuild and all that stuff. Um, it is registered, it does drive. Um, it is not a bad car, I guess, but it's got plenty of all the standard old car issues. Um, the brake booster actually uh, went out on it months ago, but life's been in the way and whatnot. And as you can see, the poor thing has just become storage. Um, it does start and run pretty well. And drives good, reasonably good, <laughs> but um, yeah, not too much to it. Let's see if we can kick it in the guts. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's gonna stay running. Of course, mandatory for these old Holden V8s. It's gotta be reasonably loud. Twin pipes out the back. I'll shut him off. It's a uh, 253 cubic inch Holden V8 with a Trimatic three-speed automatic. Um, other than that, she's pretty stock. It's got a 308 ratio diff in it to get the highway Ks because a one tunnel like this probably would have had a 355 diff or something in the back, which with only the, without an overdrive transmission makes them rev pretty hard. Um, got an El Cheapo aluminium radiator in it because the old one it was just overheating with the old one i didn't want to spend too much on it it's got coolant leaks and all that other fun stuff but she runs all right and does what it's supposed to do and i cruise around on weekends when it's not broken which as i said was months ago that it's been broken so hopefully we can get it back out excuse my absolute pigsty of a shed um, and my other hobbies so yeah thanks guys keep up the good work see you later Awesome, thank Mad you very much car. for sending that thank in. Thank you very much, If Stephen. you would like to send us a video of your crap vehicle, your crap car, your crap bike, just a crap seat. I would like someone to send us a, a video of a crap seat, and I don't mean a toilet. I mean, you've got a chair in your house and you think it's crap, oh. send us a video of it. I We're thought you meant a see it Cordoba. If oh, someone's got a see it, a see it Cordoba, Cordoba, send us one of those. I want to see one of them. Um, next you can up... send it to mycrapcar at theunicorncircuit.com. Um, uh, and uh, Martin, let's move right on next to... Next we are going... Tin foil hat feline. Every week on the show, we dive into a conspiracy. We find out whether the conspiracy is real or not. We exhaustively spend all night looking at all the different sources, researching it in depth, contacting all associated parties, doing impartial interviews to bring you the truth. It's not 60 minutes, dude. We've never done that. Well, not they, once. Do, they don't do that either. Not even. <laughs> so, <laughs> allegedly, hashtag call the lawyer. All right, Martin, what have we got? We recently put up a video of the GTIR, um, which is a car that we've done on the show before. One of our friends owns the car. We put it on the show. We did a catch and release. We got it. We fixed it up. We put it back out into the world. Someone tried to steal it and damaged it. I want to preface this by saying we put an episode up on the other channel. It explained what happened, explained some of the security considerations, insurance, stuff like that. All the things you've got to be aware of if you've got a car, particularly an old one like that, that's easy to steal. Got a ton of emails. Literally, the inbox exploded with people's like trying to help. Hey, man, I saw um, this record's got some parts. If you need it, there's one in New Zealand. Like multiple companies reached out saying, oh, like we keep stuff so some of these parts. Heaps of just legends <laughs> who are like email, looking through their local Facebook and talking about all the, you know, trying to help. Hey, I found lock barrels, I found doors, I found this, I found that. So we're legends. like, we're basically working with that and also insurance to get it sorted out. But, but there's also a few flogs. There's always a couple of flogs. And in this particular couple, case, one of the flogs was like, this is bullshit. It's a conspiracy. The guys purposely broke into their own car and smashed it up just so they could make a video about it for an insurance company. Martin. And like, Martin. What? Martin. 
I just want to, I just want to get something straight for a second. The show that we make, Mighty Car Mods, yes. has a sponsor that's an insurance company. Yeah. So. Who we used before so, they were a sponsor. Yes, we did. And the car is sponsored. The car is insured, insured. by that sponsor. That's right. Independently of us. Because we don't own the car. Yeah. But now what we do is, so we break into the car for views. Yes. We call the police. Get them to dust it for prints. And the police come and they check for... I'm just trying to go with it. Yeah, now go with it. The police check it all for fingerprints. Yeah. And then, wouldn't that be fraud? Yes. Insurance fraud. Isn't that... But don't you go to jail for that? Yes. And so the suggestion is that you would damage your own car to potentially go to jail to earn $3.50 of YouTube AdSense. Yes. Is that right? I think so. Or to support a sponsor... Here in the previous video, we, we made a video about why you should actually insure, like, insure your car and stuff. It doesn't make I, any I sense, can't, Martin. I can't See, I think maybe that's the thing, though, with conspiracies, is you've got to find the thing that makes the most logical sense. Right. And I reckon if you and I were in jail for insurance fraud, yeah. we wouldn't be able to make videos. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be challenging. Anyway, that's the conspiracy. We broke into our own shit. <laughs> It's, you know what, it's as ridiculous as all the other conspiracies. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That, that's reasonably accurate. Um, are we doing fanking? Oh, we are doing let's fanking, do fanking. Let's, let's lighten the mood a little bit with some delightful genitalia photography. Fanking is the delightful art of recontextualising a product by taking a photo of it down near your crotch. First up, we're just diving right in with John's selected nuts. Nice. There he is. He's got some classy. nice, got classy some nice blue select, pants. Selected nuts. I like that kind of it's denim work that's pant. like a tight weave kind of there. It's, it's quite good. Tough. Enjoy your oh. local... <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty good. I love it. That's the anal and... I mean, sorry, canal and river trust. Making life better by water. I wish I had one of those. Making life better by water. Enjoy your local anal. A special place we all need now more than ever. <laughs> That's good, man. Why good is job. Fank of the Week? I don't know. It must probably be some good be. Fank of the Week. It then. probably should be. That one, I can't say it out loud because it took me a little while. The first word's eat. <laughs> That's sure. We have never seen that before. Super so, extra super large, extra large nuts. nuts, roasted and salty. I'd, I'd, I'd like to eat some right yeah, now. Yeah, same. Ah, uh, Dad, you go. With electrolytes. Boom, D-Sack. The sack. I reckon D-Sack is like a good... Uh, that, that's, a good that's a good name. That's well. That's a good name. This <laughs> one's just called Shit the Bed Hot Sauce. We've seen this before. This says it's Australian hot sauce. Really? Aussie now, hot that sauce. suggests that it might be Aussie. So I do believe, Martin, that we need to get some shit the bed hot sauce. Do you know someone who works there? Or can you contact the Facebook just, page or something? I just don't want it. P.O. Box 475, Sydney Markets, 2129. I'd like to shit the bed Why won't this with stay your up? sauce. So, it's very flaccid. Next up, butt finger. Look at that. That's a crispity, crispity. Have you eaten butt finger? It's pretty good. Crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery. Yep. Peanut butter and chocolate's not a big thing where we live, but I know where some of you live, it's huge. It is. We it's don't really talk about calories imports. per piece, do we, for like items in Australia? No, nah, it's on we the talk back. We talk about sugar per and fat, but then they say per like serve is like four like of them or something, it's very confusing. Jumbo muff. Good. The rainbow lollipop. <laughs> and uh, now we've got our first fank of the week, I'll get two. I do. Let's hear his drum roll, please, mate. <laughs> Boom. Jack off tissues. <laughs> That's, I mean, <laughs> well done to you. Thank you. That's you, very clever. You win nothing, but that's very, very that's clever. Very and next clever. up, we also have <laughs> butt poppers. I just thought that was funny. I thought that was excellent. Thank you very much for sending them in. You can send your thanking photos to the thanking Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash thanking daily. That's the legit one that we started. Um, next up, Martin, is that is that the end? No, we got we got mailbag and we got random meat bag, dude. Oh, do we? We're gonna okay. mailbag it and eat bag it. This is mailbag. Mailbag is the exciting part of the show where you send stuff to our P.O. box, which is P.O. Box 475, Sydney Markets, New South Wales, 2129 Australia. Look at this thing here that has arrived. <clears throat> this one here is addressed to uh, Ms. M. Jimney and Mr. K Truck, send it JDM style, vegan lemon, blow off valve with unicorn extra boost sauce, easy mad. And they've done a, um, they've done a custom kind of envelope here. And it's come from Mr. Suzuki-san. 
So let's have a little uh, let's have a little look inside Martin and see what it is that we have been sent by someone who calls themselves Mr. Suzuki-san. All right, it appears to be. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Thank you. And here we have. We have. Um. That's Thank you very much. The page out of a Suzuki brochure from Japan. There's a Jimny there, and that, look at this mad one with a little camper on it. Oh yeah. I don't know exactly why you sent it to us, but I like it. Oh, oh look at this car! Look at the Suzuki Hustler. I badly want to go four wheel driving in Japan. I mean, we are—you know—that other channel is the best four wheel driving show ever on the internet. Martin, Imagine four wheel driving in Japan. Oh, Martin, that'd be great. So good. Thank you. Um, I mean, that's that's very interesting. A little mad Suzuki wagon. Thank you. This I like is Suzuki from things. this is from Josh, and Josh it says fragile on it. Josh has photos of us together at multiple things, so he's come to at least two meets that I can see there, and the old restaurant, and just. Oh, dude, and look, he, he's getting older each time. Oh, well. Can I have a look? I want yeah, to see him. This is from and Josh. And can I read it? Yep, read hey, it. Hey, Marty Moog, please enjoy a small token of appreciation for many years of awesome videos, content, nationals, and wishbone. It was a sad day when he announced the closing, as I'm sure it was for you guys too. Yes, it was. Oh, my God. Um, the only kind of flip side of that has happened just before COVID, and if the restaurant was still going, we would have been in trouble. We would have been over. All the laughter, fun time and music, and the list goes on. This is a few sweet creations to say thank you. Hey, Josh, that's really freaking awesome. Oh, ah, dude. I remember. I remember, oh. <laughs> I remember taking this photo with you, by the way. Um, I remember this. I remember you. Hello. What is that? Unicorn biscuits, dude. Unicorn They're biscuits? They're all custom-made biscuits. He's got ones with, like, top logos oh, and unicorn dude, circuit logos. Look. There's a unicorn, unicorn circuit. Ones. Look at this. It's an edible unicorn circuit. Josh, that is so Thank awesome. Thanks, man. Dude, that's unreal. That's rad. Thank you so much. That's I'm unreal. I'm going to have a small portion of that. Yeah, I'm going to have a small portion a of that low sugar Thank adventure. you very much. Thank you for your support. Love your we sweet got one creations. More. Let this us is, know. This is from Stephen. Sweet Creations by T. Sweet Creations by T. And there's a little thing down there. So, thank you very much. Last one, Martin. What do you Last got? Last one. This is from Stephen from Sydney somewhere. He has sent a... Oh, oh Mad yes. Cars. Mad Cars. So cool. Oh, thank you very much. There's a note. There's a note. There's a note. Focus, Mighty RS. Thank you for all your videos, content, and knowledge you guys share. Youth of the Street students Sprint really up. appreciate it. From Stephen. Oh, cool. What is it? Youth of the Street students. That, they're in the city somewhere, aren't they? Oh, Youth of the Streets? Yeah. Really? Thank you for the video's content. Youth of the Streets really appreciate it. Um, from Seven Contact. Um, I would like to actually call this person, Martin. Do it. Um, and find out um, if he... Like, does he work for Youth of the Streets? What does he do? Youth of the Streets is a um, charity, uh, a wonderful charity that, of course, is, is helping people who have come from a diverse range of backgrounds that kind of often need some, need some help. So I'm actually just going to call this guy and I'm going to tell him that we're shooting a show and I'm just going to say, hey man, thanks yes. for sending in the stuff. Martin, can you fill in some dead air for a minute? Dead air. Um, please enjoy this picture of a car. Let's see if he answers. Stefan. Pretty exciting. Hi, you've reached Stefan. I'm currently unavailable. If you can leave your name yes, and number can. and a brief message, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Hey Stefan, it's Marty and Moog here from the Unicorn Circuit. Um, we just got the package that you sent us and we were ringing to say thank you. We're filming live right now, um, but unfortunately we're not speaking to you. Thank you very much for sending in the cars. Um, and um, you thought, oh, it's you, your voicemail. His voicemail hung up on voicemail me. Voicemail doesn't really right. work. Thank right, you very good. much. Technical glitch. Right. <laughs> Next up on the Unicorn Circuit, we have Random Eat. <laughs> This week on Random Eat Bag, we had a random thing that we got. Um, out of a bag. Our, our, our Random Eat Bag unicorn, he wore it as a hat and now it's gone. Yeah, our Random so Eat Bag know, that maybe someone he wore gave us is gone. Maybe after he wore it as a hat, he wore it as undies. And then... Are you still watching? Is narrative. the lovely young lady that gave us the unicorn bag? Are you still watching? So this we is the bag. need a new. Okay, Martin, I'm putting this out there. Whoa. That bag, it, it had a lot of screen time, it had a lot of air time. I'm putting it out there. We need a new bag. I'm going straight down the barrel. We need a new bag to eat our random food out of. Is there anyone there that can make us one? You could knit us a beanie. You could crochet something, you could do some custom artwork. We need a new bag for the show. Can you make us one? P.O. Box 475, Sydney Markets, New South Wales, 2129. 
Send us a bag. We'll eat some food out of it, but make sure you made it yourself. All right, I'm in back. the meantime, we have nah, 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 a sour paper. Look how paper. shit this bag is. We have, Look how shit this bag is. We have, oh, dude, we have because sour. Because you haven't made us one yet. Sour paper. Oh, Martin, I'll have a go at that. Yeah, I will. Yeah, get in there. Sour paper. Oh, no, you're supposed to do this. I reckon no. you're supposed to do this. Mmm. Martin? Oh, no, you're not. Yes, you are. See? That is the most delicious lolly oh! I've ever had. That's off its head. Off its face. No. Oh. We also have. I'm going to chase it though. With a little unit. I don't oh, know what this is. No, actually. Soda flavour. I'm going to eat. Oh, that's a Mentos. I'm going to eat. Whoa, smell that. Some unicorn smell circuit that. biscuit. Blech. So strong. Martin, do you want some unicorn circuit biscuit? What's that? I don't Blech. know, Martin. Blech. Smell it. We have to. No, no, no. You, I don't have to. You should. Definitely. Probably smells bad, tastes all right, yeah? Because it's just like fish sauce or something. Is it good? That is amazing. No. Dude, I'm not shitting No, you, you are shitting me. You're doing that thing. Tight am. It tastes it like fish's ass. <laughs> all right. You did on purpose. All right. We're yeah. finishing this show. Purge, purge, purge. Martin, do you want to have a bite of this unicorn soda? No, biscuit? I want a bite of the unicorn, actual unicorn one. All right. Purge. Thank you very, very much for watching. Ah, it's not much better. Yep. Why oh. do people eat that stuff? That's really good. Thank you very much. The other day, we'll be back next year. In a comment. Next month or next week. Someone said, do all Australians eat with their mouths open? Because we were munching on kebabs after we got our RX-7 value. They don't. We were just being rude for the views. Partly being rude, but also... If our mouths weren't open, how would you know we were eating? Think Wait about that. What? That doesn't make any sense. If our mouths weren't open, how would you know that we were actually eating? We could be faking it. Because they would have seen the no. food go into our face like no, this. because it could have been... Look, watch this. Ready? <laughs> I'm faking it. Do you know what I mean? No. You got ready? Watch this. <laughs> I'm faking it. Watch this. Ready? Not faking it. You can see it. It's in there. It's like implied versus explicit, right? Is that the whole thing? Do you know what I mean? No. Like, ready, this is implied. This is what? explicit, ready? Oh! <laughs> it's the same. Um, just for anybody getting upset, before we filmed this, I gave Martin written permission to smack my bottom. And we said at the end of the show, he'll smack my bottom. Isn't that part of our friend contract? And then I will um, smack his bottom. Isn't that part of the friend and contract we have? It was permission that we gave each other expressly in writing because we believed that more people would watch the show. <laughs> Sorry, we're so full of shit. We're That's the end. end. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. See you next time on the Unicorn Circuit. Bye-bye.